Today we are going to talk about bump pans and specifically how to make sure they never stick and come out nice and cleanly every single time. Okay, so there are basically three key methods in how to do this. Uh, each of them has their own pros and cons, and I'm going to go through all of them briefly and then show you my favourite. So, the first one is classic, it's just butter and flour. What you're going to do is take your tin and a pastry brush, and we're just going to brush all over the inside of the tin with that butter. Now, it's really important that this butter is not melted, it needs to be soft and spreadable, but not melted. And that's because Nordic Web Bunt Pans have a non-stick lining, which helps ensure the cake comes out. But when you're greasing them, which you still need to do, if you brush melted butter, or even say a vegetable oil, onto a non-stick surface, it will bead, and rather than adhere to the surface, it won't adhere to it at all. So when you dust it with flour, it'll be very patchy, and you'll get cake sticking all over. So make sure it's a really nice, soft, but not melted texture. Also, it's worth noting that when you are greasing the pan, what I find a lot of the time is people don't concentrate enough on the central core of the pan. I find if your cake is gonna stick, this is where it'll stick, so make sure every part of this is nice and evenly coated. Once your pan is coated in our fat, we're gonna use some flour, just the same flour you're using for your recipe, so all-purpose flour, plain flour, and we're just gonna dust the pan lightly. What you want to do, take some form of sieve or a dusting wand or something and just lightly coat the whole surface in flour and then you're going to take the tin and we're going to turn it upside down and then with a very nice firm tap, we're going to tap it to get rid of all of that excess flour, leaving behind a really nicely greased and lined tin. Now you can use flour if your cake is going to be on the paler side, but if say you're doing a chocolate cake, you can replace that flour with cocoa powder as well, and that way you're not going to get a kind of floury look to the outside of your cake. The second method for lining your pan is this, it's a cake release spray. Um, there are a couple of things to note for this, Nordicware, the manufacturers of these tins, don't advise using a cuisine, a cooking style spray, and by that they mean something that's not designed for cake. So if it's pumping out like a, a low calorie spray and it's not aerosolizing it, that again means you're going to get an uneven coating, but also the oils in a cuisine based, a cooking based spray can damage over time the coating in the pan. So it's best to use one that is designed for cakes. Um, again, same thing is true for this style as with the butter. What you're going to want to do is make sure you coat the pan nice and evenly. So because these are an aerosolized spray, you want to hold it about 20 centimeters away from the tin and you're just going to spray lightly, kind of tilting the pan, making sure that every nook and cranny is coated. And that again is because these pans have got such great design and detail, you need to make sure though that the greasing goes all the way into those corners, those nooks, so that the cake comes out nice and cleanly. So both of those are completely fine methods. I use the spray, or I used to use the spray a lot, but a few years ago I started changing to what I find is the most fail-safe way of releasing a cake from a bun pan, and it's this stuff. It's cake goop. So basically what that is is just an equal parts by volume mixture of flour, oil, something like vegetable, and shortening. In the UK, shortening is going to be a fat known as Trex, that's the most common one, and in the US it's going to be something like Crisco. And basically you're just going to take equal quantities by volume and you're going to mix them to form a nice paste, just until it's nice and smooth, mix it together until you've got this paste. And this is what this is. This is kind of your all-purpose, guaranteed, non-stick cake goop. You can use this for all sorts of cakes, all sorts of pans, but I find it is perfect for bun pans. So what we're gonna do is I make this, I store it in the fridge, and then all you're gonna do is use it to brush all over inside the cake. Again, just like you did with the butter and the flour, but this has all of that in there, so it's just one step. And because it is nice and white, it's also really easy to see if you've missed a spot as well. If when you put it in the fridge it becomes really firm, just pop it in a microwave for a few seconds just to slightly soften it so it's easier to spread. So now that we've learned how to grease and properly prepare our bun pan, the question is how do we get it out of the pan nice and easily? 
Well, there's one other rule you need to adhere to, and it's what I call the 10 minute rule. When you take any cake out of the oven, but especially big cakes out of the oven, they're still baking, there's still a lot of residual heat in that cake. And what that means is the cake isn't fully set. So if you turn it out immediately, there's a risk it will break into a couple of different pieces because it's too delicate. But the opposite is kind of also true. If you leave the cake for too long in the pan before turning out, the sugars in the cake can make it more sticky and make it adhere to the sides of the pan, meaning it's gluing itself to the pan. So the easy thing to do is just leave it for 10 minutes. There's a sweet spot of around seven to 10 minutes. And I generally set a timer as soon as it comes out of the oven for 10 minutes and then turn it out onto a wire rack and it should come out nice and cleanly. Any earlier, you risk breaking it, too much later, it can stick. So that is your nice sweet spot. So now hopefully that you know how to prevent your cakes from sticking in your bundt pan, you won't have any issues and you can make the most beautiful bundt cakes going forward. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I make new baking content all the time and also follow me over on Instagram and TikTok where I post lots more baking content every single day.